Hey everybody, welcome to Behind the Clipboard. I'm so excited to have Addie Roberge with me today of Addie Roberge Photography. How you doing, Addie? Good, how are you, Kelly? I'm good. I am so thrilled to talk to you today because you're one of my favorite people to work with. We always have such a good time. Um, but tell me a little bit about you and how you got started into photography and kind of how you ended up doing weddings. Um, well, I've been doing this for about eight years now, probably a little bit more, but the road to get here was kind of a windy one. I didn't realize that I wanted to do this till a little bit later. I actually went to school at UMass Amherst and majored in wildlife fish conservation and hotel restaurant wow. travel administration. <laughs> so, but photography was something that I always had as a passion. Like I can remember back uh, in high school, taking pictures of me uh, being on the rowing team, traveling with them, taking pictures of everything, and, and just always kind of making that something that documenting those moments in my life were super important to me. So after graduation, I was working in a record store and was like, what am I, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what am I doing? Like, I, I clearly, you know, maybe didn't pick the right thing. Like, so I kept kind of diving into it. I had a good friend of mine who's who's a photographer, uh, a wedding photographer as well, he was like, you've always loved photography. Like, why aren't you exploring that more? And I was like, maybe I can. So um, something I didn't go to school for. Um, obviously, I did my school, but it was something that I just kind of put a lot of work into personally. And, you know, everything, I second, I shadowed people. Um, I, would, I edited for a company to, like, kind of get my editing chops down, you know, the money I made there. I put towards equipment, so I was kind of always, I wasn't in the red. I didn't like buy a bunch of stuff that I couldn't afford. Like I only bought things that I could uh, with the money I earned editing. And it just kind of grew from there because I feel like I really tried to, you know, understand my clients. I, I wanted to work hard for them. I, doing good work for them was something that was super important to me. So I've just been very fortunate that like since then things have just grown, you know, and, and, and I've been very, very lucky. and. I really couldn't imagine doing anything else. I really love this. So yeah, a total from the ground up story about how you kind of got into it and you know keep it going. So what is it about weddings that you love and kind of keeps you sticking in that industry? The people, the, like seriously, the people. I feel like over these past several years, like I've had so many wonderful clients, like people that I just really value and connect with. And I like to think that the energy you put out there, you get back. Like you attract those kind of people, you get those people back. Um, I honestly feel so happy for people on a wedding day and to know that, you know, I just feel so good, for, like happy for them. Like, and to know that I'm producing something to them that's going to be priceless, that I can give that gift to them, to me is priceless. Like, you know, that's like an amazing feeling. So I never really forget about that when I'm shooting. Like when I shoot, like I, you know me, I like to have a lot of fun. We, I want everybody to have a good time that day, but like, I never forget, like, about, you know, what's grandma doing? What's dad doing? What were the family, those, you know, key family members? What are they up to? And, like, documenting those, like, those nice intimate moments that people are really going to, like, cherish. So. Yeah. That's so beautiful. That's what you really want in a photographer is that genuine just, like, care about that it is your wedding day and how special it is for them and being able to recognize it. And definitely shows in your work, you know, the, the passion. Yeah. I think I can't, we tell, you, I can't tell you how many uh, weddings I've cried at. I'm like taking <laughs> pictures. The tears are coming down. Yeah. Oh my god! I can't. I just like I feel for people. I get. You know, I like all the feels. So I know. I'm with you. I luckily can sometimes like step away from the ceremony for a minute and get my composure. But you're right there in the middle of it. So. <laughs> No, I'll like, I'll remember people's vows. Like I'll look through my photos. I'll be editing. I'll remember the exact words that like somebody, you know, a bride said to a groom and I'll just like be taken back. And that's the feeling I hope people get when they see my images like of their wedding day, that it takes them right back to those moments. You know, I think I, I say in like my bio on my website, you know, a photo helps sharpen up a moment for you. And your, if your memory's a little foggy on something, you've got, a, you've got a photo there to help sharpen it up and like keep those memories like lasting. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we're going to dive into our hot topic, which is about making the photos as smooth as possible. So the wedding day going into it, you know, for whether it's clients that don't have a planner or you have a planner, you know, you want to have a timeline nailed down. 
for all your vendors, but especially for your, you know, for your photographer, working with your photographer. So everyone knows when things are happening, when people need to move, who needs to be where, right? So when we're working with clients and they start asking us about, you know, you know, when are we doing photos? Are we doing a first look? All of that. I like to start with the shot list. And this is a really important piece. I know, especially for you, because you need to know who to get pictures for and, you know, how long that photo process might end up being. So kind of once you kind of get an idea of what shots they want, how many, how, like, how are you able to kind of take that shot list and what's your first plan of attack from there? Yeah, I mean, with my clients, you know, typically about two months before the wedding, I'll send them a questionnaire. And part of that is listing out every important family shot list, like shot that you want. We list them out. We, I break it up into family and bridal party, and we list out exactly what shots you want so we don't miss anything. Sometimes I'll take the initiative to add in a couple that I think might be important. I very much would love a photo of you and your mom to happen organically, like a nice candid, but if it if it doesn't, you know, it's on the shot list so that, you know, mom's not chasing me down after be like, where's the photo of me and my daughter? Um, you know, so that's super important. I'll suggest things like that. You know, once I get that questionnaire back from my clients, I can see how long that family shot list is going to be. And that's going to help me, you know, plan out the actual timeline. Okay, okay, so this should take about 20 minutes for like all these families. Yeah, you know, family shots and things like that. And, you know, and bridal party might be 15, 20 minutes. It just depends. It depends on how many different types of shots you want. If you want to keep things nice and easy, like group of girls, group of guys, everybody together, woohoo, like, and we keep going, you know, that can be like 10 minutes. But um, it is really important to have that listed out because I know from, you know, my experience, I'll be able to estimate exactly how much time we're going to need. And so, you know, we're not, we're keeping things flowing. We're not wasting time. We're being as efficient as possible. I usually advise clients to keep the family photos to immediate family if they want to be, you know, kind of moving through this quickly and not having that occupy all their time. Possibly maybe during, if you're doing a first look and we're doing photos beforehand, we'll get through those photos quickly. If you start roping in extended family, you could be waiting on people to show up. It kind of creates a situation it could it could, it's a situation where more things could go wrong. I don't want I don't want to say wrong, but you could be waiting on people. It's a lot more people to round up. Um, you know, those <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, those types of photos, I would say maybe we hit those during cocktail hour or during reception if it's a larger. Hey, you know, my side of the family's all here. Let's do a big group photo. We'll work it out like during that time. But I would say not invite extended family to photos beforehand. Um, you know or obviously exceptions are made, but I, I, that would be my advice just to kind of keep things moving and, and have it be a little bit more manageable, basically. You bring up a good point of kind of like the first look versus just trying to get all your photos into cocktail hour. You know, obviously for some couples, it's really important to maintain that tradition and see each other for their first time at the ceremony, but that can make those photos and that short window of time that you have even more condensed and you have to be even more organized. <laughs> tight. Exactly. Yeah, cocktail hour photos can be tight because you don't get the whole hour. I think people think you're going to get a whole hour there. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, you know, somebody's going to say, Hey, we got to bustle her dress. You know, we need like 15 minutes of four intros, you know, and you know, it's just, it, it gets pretty tight. I, I feel like a lot more clients are leaning more towards having a first look these days. I personally don't think it takes away from the specialness of seeing each other for the first time. Um, I still think when you walk down the aisle and you guys lock eyes, it's going to be a nice moment, <laughs> you know? So, um, and by doing the photos beforehand, you really get a lot more flexibility um, with your, with the time and the portrait time and stuff like that. Cause like my favorite part of the day it's taking portraits of the couple, you know, like I want to get out there and have that time and not have um, the time restraints that really can crush creativity a little bit, you know, or you've picked a beautiful venue, like, and you're just like in love with your venue and the property is gorgeous. And we don't really get to utilize it because we've only got like a tiny window of time, you know? So just things I, I kind of talk to clients about and I fully support whatever they want to do and we'll build a timeline around that. But I, I do, you know, the, the first look is, is definitely a smoother, a smoother timeline, I think, personally, from my experience. Agreed. If you're a bride or a groom and you're out there and you are concerned at all about missing your cocktail hour or not having time to get all your photos, 
a hundred percent go with a first look. That is who wants to miss cocktail hour. <laughs> you get to see everybody, you know, you can mix and mingle, you're married. It's like really when you have that, like the energy is at its high, you know, one of the highest points because the ceremony just concluded. Everyone's excited to see you. I think keeping your priorities in check of what's important to you on that day, you know, for a lot of people getting a ton of really great photos is really important to them. So maybe that means you got to bump up your hair and makeup and be ready earlier and, you know, just be prepared to do a lot more photos before. So you can get all those locations in. You just got to kind of think about and talk to your photographer, you know, really about what's realistic and what can happen in the time that's allotted. Um, Okay. So I'd love to wrap up with one of my favorite portions, which is learned the hard way. So, you know, being an entrepreneur and then especially working in events, there are a lot of things that we fortunately and unfortunately learned the hard way. Um, You know, whether that's how we run our business or things at an event, you know, that just come up that maybe we hadn't seen before. Um, and so I'd love for you to share maybe something that, you know, through your, through your time as a wedding photographer that you may have learned the hard way. Um, <laughs> now you tell us all about all the mistakes you've made. Um, well, I have to say through my career, I've been very, very lucky that, you know, any obstacle or, you know, problem that we faced on that day, you know, me and if I had a second shooter or, you know, just myself, I've always figured out a solution to that problem. Like there's always, but I think early on, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, you really need to have plan A and then plan B and then plan C, you know, in order to have like a super successful day because you never know the weather could change in a flash or the bride might just be like, you know what, actually, I, I don't want to do a first look. We've got, we've got, to, we've got, to, I, let's just do photos during cocktail. You got to like roll with the punches. You know, I had, an, I had a wedding really early on in my career at this beautiful apple orchard. Um, and that's kind of all they had going for them. They had like a really beautiful orchard and the venue itself was a box with no windows so uh when it rained that day i had a, you know having two portraits was like a really really tough you know tough for me so i kind of really i realized early on that i you know maybe scouting a bit more um you know having those backup plans could have really aided me um you know and those are the kind of things i do now if i haven't been to a venue um, and it's, you know, close enough, I might scout it beforehand and be like, this is a great spot. And this is a great spot to take, you know, family portraits and look at the shade over here. This is going to be perfect. Um, you know, and just kind of get the lay of the land and have all my plans that day. Cause something I always tell people is like, you can't get time back on a wedding day. You can't get time back. So you can't be wasting time. You have to have a plan, you know? So that's, um, that's something I kind of realized throughout my career. Um, and uh, I don't have any photos of that wedding uh, from the Apple Orchard on my website currently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a great lesson, though. And I think it's something that, I mean, it makes you such a great photographer because couples feel so secure going into their day because they know that you've thought of everything, you know having backup plans, no matter whether it's with your photos or your venue or anything that could happen, weather related or transportation or whatever it is, just brings that extra peace of mind to your wedding day. So having that, you know, as part of your photographer too, is definitely just going to make you feel even more confident going into your day. So it's a, it's a great thing. Um, well, thank you so much, Addie, for taking some time. It's so lovely to see you and chat with you. And I can't wait till we're back out there again, once, you know, we can all gather to get again and celebrate. Um, yeah, everybody definitely check out Addie, um, at AddieRoberishPhotography.com and on Instagram at AddieRoberishPhotography. I've got her links, um, and everything up here and follow us at Kelly Elizabeth events on Instagram. Thank you so much, Addie. Thank you, Kelly. I'm very flattered you asked me. Thank you very, very much. (laughs) You're one of my favorites to work with and I knew it was going to be a ball. So thank you for taking the time.